Hey, I'm making this video for you to help you with the final day of the introduction design technology unit. So you've made your gearboxes, you made your car with those gearboxes. Now you're like, how do I program this? So let me help you through this process. Okay. Um, we're going to start by taking some notes. I'm going to do it here right in this image of the build section. So uh, let me change the font here. So what are we exactly needing to make the car do? Well, remember it's right here in the highlighted area. Okay, so what we need to do is we, may, we need to make the car go forward. So I'm going to write here some notes for us. We need to get the car to um, move forward. After that, we're going to need it to eventually turn left. We're going to need it to then turn right. And we need it to go, go backwards. It doesn't mean that it has to actually end up um, where we started. So it's really going to look something like this. Once you hit the start button, which I guess is something we're going to have to include here. But anyways, we're going to go forward. Then it's going to go left. Uh, that's kind of hard to show. Let me just show <laughs> you with this with this um, cursor. So if we're going to go forward, okay, then we're going to make the car turn left, which means we got to get one of our things to move, then turn right. And then go backwards. I'm not telling you specifically how long it should be doing this uh, or how short. It just needs to be able to physically move forward. You need to see that the whole car turns left, turns right, and then goes backwards. So some things we need to think about with this. What are some of the things we're going to need to program? Well, to make the car go forward, before we even get it to move forward, we're going to have to um, do an initial starting of the button, right? So these are things that we need to think about. Everything that we're going to program is going to happen after we push that start button, once you download the software. So to get the car to move forward, what do you need to have start moving? You have to think about that. That's going to be your two gearboxes. Now, in the software, it's not called a gearbox. We're just thinking about your motor. Okay, so we're going to have our left motor and right motor. So we're going to say our L motor needs to move at X speed. You're going to pick to choose that. Okay, our motor needs to move uh, X speed. And you also have to then, um, before it turns left, you're going to have to tell it to um, have a specific distance or time, stopping of time. So distance or time needs to be determined. BBD, okay? That's all the programming we're going to need, need for moving forward. So I'm going to leave it here for us to come back to. For it to turn left, and we'll make it look like I knew what I'm doing. Uh, for it to turn left then, we're going to need how many motors to actually move. So if our car needs to go to the, uh, with the video here, I'll, yeah, go to the left, that means we have just one motor that needs to turn, the other one doesn't, okay? So for it to turn left, we're gonna need the left side motor to probably do all the work. So we're gonna say L motor move at X speed. The right motor is not gonna have to do anything and then you're going to have to, again, determine distance or the time that it's going to be moving. Okay. So we just need it to turn. And then it's going to, after that, we're going to need, oh, I forgot one thing that we didn't do. Back here, we have the distance and time that it's going to be going, but then we also have to have left motor stop, right motor stop. Okay. Now with the turning left part, we just need to make the L motor stop. And I see that I have movie here. Okay. So <clears throat> for then the right turn to work, it's the same exact thing as the turn left, except we're going to change those L's to R's. So I'm going to copy and paste that and we're going to put R motor. Our motor okay and then uh, for it to go backwards we're going to need it to go straight backwards so this is one where it's going to be very similar to forward we're going to have to get it to have a specific speed oh it's all going to look exactly the same except we're going to have to have a negative speed because that means it's going to go in the opposite direction okay and then it's going to have to stop 
I'm not having it go back to where it started. That's all you have to do. So we're going to use these notes to help us to design the program for um, using the VJC software. Okay, that looks like a lot, but this is going to help us to stay organized. So I'm going to open up the VJC software. This video would go really well if you had it on your Chromebook next to the desktops. So first thing we have to do is we have to get the motors going. So let's set a motor. Okay, so we have DC zero for one of our motors. I think I can zoom in on this, can't I? Yeah, make it a little bigger. So we have our first motor and we have in DC zero. So you have to make sure that that motor is plugged into DC zero. Let's grab another motor out. So this one is going to be DC one. And why not? Let's just make it go 100 speed. Okay. So that takes care of here where we have motor move and a speed. Okay. Now we have to figure out how long we want that to go for. So we're going to put in here a delay. So how long do we want it to run before the delay? Let's say two seconds, which seems pretty long, but we're going to do that anyways. Okay. So now that means that the motors are going to run for 1,001, 1,002, and then stop. Now, to make sure we know that the motors stop, what do we have to program here in the software? If I look back at our notes here, it says that we're going to have to figure out the stop. Okay, I must have clicked on something here. So let's go ahead and get those to stop. So I'm going to bring out the motors again, DC0 and DC1. And let's set the speed at zero. So that means that nothing's going to happen. So we've programmed part of the uh, stuff already. So this is all done. What this is called is called pseudocode. This is human talk. And over in the on the software, we're kind of doing the set block coding. Over here is the actual coding. This is what it would look like to get it to go. So over here, you can see we have the motors running at full speed. Motor zero, motor one for two seconds. And then they stop. Okay, so after they stop, let's give it a pause as well. Um, oop, timer. Let's give it a pause of half a second just to get those motors to stop. Now we need to acknowledge the left hand turn. So the left hand turn is just motor left. Left motor is going to move at so much speed for a certain amount of distance and then stop. So let's just pull out a motor and uh, you should probably set up this way. So motor zero is your left one. Let's have it go at a speed of 75. And let's have it just run for a half a second. Now, if you notice when you're doing this programming, if you wanted it to turn a perfect 90 degrees and a half second gets it cocked to the side a little bit, about 45 degrees, then you know that five, a half a second isn't long enough. You're going to have to go and reprogram it to go a little bit longer. So you got to play with this a little bit, okay? You may need to change the speed, but I didn't say you have to have an exact 90 degree turn. It just, it seems like the clean way to do it. So after it's ran for a half a second at a speed of 75, we now have to get that same motor, motor zero to stop. Okay, we've now done all the programming for the turn left. Turn right is going to look exactly the same, except we're going to use a different motor. So these are all the, all the pieces we needed. Okay. Running at 75, delay of half a second. Oh, we got to put another delay to stop it. So let's run another motor. This one we got to change to DC1. We did the other one at 75, so let's do this one at 75. Let's have it run for half a second. And then we'll get the motor DC1 to come to a stop. So we got to set it at zero. And then I'm gonna move myself over a little bit so you can see the coding here too. Um, and then we're gonna have it delay one more half second. And then the last one is get the car to go backwards. So same as we did with the go forward, except negative speeds, um, time you can choose whatever you want it to be and then stop. So let's go back and finish this up. So we need two motors right away. Motor one or motor zero, I should say, and motor one. Let's have them go 100, oops, negative 100. And the other one also has to be negative 100 speed. Let's have it go for a length of 
two seconds again since we did that before. And then once it goes for two seconds, we're going to bring back, we're going to bring the two motors out. Let's make sure we have motor zero and motor one, and we want them at a zero stop. Okay. And then what we want is just a, we, we don't actually have to put anything in there for a delay, but I just do because it's consistent. We're just going to say it will stop after that half second. Okay. Oh, that's it. That's all the programming. So to get it to run, remember that you're going to give it a name. So let's call it simple car. It doesn't like all of that. So we're going to do sim car. And then you click download once you plug in the USB drive and then go test it out. Tweak your numbers around, change things up a little bit. But this is a good starter point for you to be able to complete your car. Now, remember, you're going to have to give me a screenshot of your coding. You can use the magnifying glass to go down. Uh, to try to get it all, or just do multiple images of it, and that will work perfectly fine for me too. Or what will work even better, instead of copying all this stuff, if you can do a screenshot of what's over here, that would work really well for me too. All right, so there should be no excuse that you don't know what you're doing because I kind of just walked you through how to do it. Use this, tweak it, change it up a little bit. It may not work perfectly how you want the first time, Go back through these steps and find where those errors are. Again, I'm just looking for forward, left, right, back, and that's it. So don't overdo it. All right, good luck. Can't wait to see your final product. And then don't forget to turn in your dock once you have everything done.